Hey, would you look at that? What are you doing, Abby? Huh? Are you generating solar energy, girl? Good girl, look at that. Yeah, my dog is actually generating solar energy right now. So yeah, over the last month or so, I've been experimenting with designs and I have built a solar panel that mounts onto my dog. And that solar panel lets me collect solar energy from my dog while she's working here on my farm. And I don't just have solar panels on my livestock guardian dog. I'm also now using solar panels on my chickens and my cattle. And the really crazy part is the amount of solar energy I'm collecting on my farm could potentially power an electric car to drive 55 miles. 55 miles! I truly believe that an agrovoltaic application like this could potentially revolutionize the planet. And in this video, I actually wanna show you guys how I'm doing it and how I think it can help everybody. So as longtime viewers of my YouTube channel are well aware, I am a huge fan of renewable energy and solar energy specifically. As it stands today, our farm's actually powered by the solar co-op that we belong to that's in my neighbor's field right next door. And for years, I've been dreaming of actually trying to find other ways to harness the power of my farm to not just produce good, healthy food as well as be profitable, but I've also been looking for ways to help the planet. And as you look at Abby Dog's solar backpack right here, I think this thing fits the bill. So last year, I read this article about some sheep farmers in New Zealand who not only graze their sheep underneath solar panels, but they've also figured out a way to attach solar panels to their sheep. And since I'm the type of farmer who's been able to put cameras on every type of animal on my farm, I figured that trying to mount solar panels on my animals couldn't be that much harder. And so I went to work and trying to build a harness. And I went through a number of different iterations and different prototypes. I even called in some help from my buddy Alfred and most of those prototypes were big old flops. The other thing I discovered is that Toby Dog is just not a fan of wearing the panel. While Abby Dog is perfectly happy to wear the solar panels, Toby Dog just doesn't like them so he's not wearing it. You wanna try to wear it? You wanna try it? No, you'd rather eat my glove? Toby, do you want this? No. You're saying no? I understand, pal. I also tried to mount them on barn cats, but unfortunately, because barn cats spend so much of their time hiding in the dark in a barn, they just don't collect enough juice to make it worth the squeeze. But you're still adorable, Ginny. Yes, you are, sweetie. All right, guys, let's show them how this works on chickens. Come on, let's go. Hey, chickens! So yeah, just the other day, I actually completed the prototype for the chicken. I've been fine tuning it right now. And you can actually see this girl right here, this Rhode Island Red, she's got a little solar panel mounted right to her back. It's pretty exciting actually. And it's been holding up. She's been wearing it for about three days now. It doesn't seem to bother her. At the same time that I collect her eggs, I actually collect the battery that's attached to that solar panel. And so I'm able to take that battery off of her and add it to my collective use of electricity. So yeah, so you can see my solar chicken and my solar dog right next to each other. Yes, you're doing really good, Abby. Yes, you are. Now you guys might be seeing that tiny little solar panel on the chicken and you're probably saying, well, how much electricity can a little tiny solar panel like that on the back of a chicken actually generate in Vermont. And well, that one little solar panel on that chicken can actually generate about 60 watt hours in a given day this time of year. So that means it's enough electricity to power our Wi-Fi router for about six hours, or you could power a desk lamp for about 12 hours, or you could run a digital clock for about 30 hours. Whoa, hey, we have a goose fight. <laughs> now you guys might be wondering, well, what about the ducks and geese? Can I use my ducks and geese for solar collection too? And the answer there is unfortunately no. Because both the ducks and geese are waterfowl, they like to spend a lot of time in the water. And that time spent in the water creates a lot of issues with both the battery as well as the solar panel and all the wiring. And so much like it's not worth it to try to mount on the barn cats, it's also not worth it to try to mount the panels on a duck or a goose. And so this is really an experiment reserved for dogs, chickens, and cattle. And yes, I did say cattle because I have one more thing I want to show you. So this is our farm's bull, Macho Man Randy Savage. And for the last couple of weeks, he's been wearing a solar panel too. I actually got these solar panels that they manufacture in China and imported a bunch of them. I customized them a little bit by adding these grommets, which can then accept these bungee cords that I use as a harness. And this is how it stays mounted to them. And it's really durable. Like I was worried it was gonna flop right off, but those things stick on like glue and it seems really comfortable. It doesn't seem to bother him. These solar panels are all weather and what's even cooler is that there's a USB port so I can actually use it to charge my phone. 
<laughs> so now my phone battery's never gonna die when I'm out on pasture. So like I said, I've got a number of these. Now that I've finished the testing stage with Macho Man, I'll be trying them on other cattle, particularly Baby B and Ariel, who are the other cattle who let me brush them. But the real goal is to get all of my cattle wearing these, and then I start to generate a whole heck of a lot of power. How much power, you might ask? Well, please allow me to math it all out for you guys. So in terms of how much energy does this actually produce, I had to take you guys inside to break down the numbers but here's the rundown of the energy production. Number one, you gotta look at some assumptions. So specifically the surface area of the panels plus the solar irradiance in terms of like how much sun's being produced. And that's gonna change depending on where you are in the country. But I used an assumption of about a thousand uh, watts per square meter, which is kind of like the general average for us here in Vermont. Then on top of that, you gotta figure out the efficiency of the solar panels. I went with an assumption of roughly 15%, which is a little bit conservative, but I wanted to be conservative with these numbers. When I look at the surface area for each of the animals, with livestock guardian dogs, because of their size and mobility, it's relatively a small area of surface that gets used on Abbey Dog there. So generally we're gonna say it's 0.2 square meters. For cattle, we get a lot more space. And so we get roughly one square meter per uh, cow or bull in my case. And then with chickens, obviously because they're tiny and the panel's tiny, it was 0.05 meters for uh, chicken. And so these are the assumptions that I use. I create this formula where it basically is S, which is the amount of sun, times the amount of surface area, times the efficiency of the panel, which is represented by N. That ultimately gives you the wattage that comes from the production of a solar panel. You know, and I went with an eight hour day assumption. Obviously in the summer you get way more, in the winter you get way less. And so basically what that's gonna give you is 240 watt hours per dog per day, 1200 watt hours per cow per day and 60 watt hours per chicken per day. I feel like that's a very conservative and reasonable assumption. You know, a dog could run a lamp like the one I have back there for about 24 hours just off of one day's worth of work, a laptop for about six hours, a smartphone charger for about 48 hours, a cow could run a microwave oven for about an hour and a half, a refrigerator for about six hours, a television for a 12 hour period of time. And so that's pretty sizable. And the chickens, you know, given their small contribution, it would essentially be about six hours for a Wi-Fi router, 12 hours for a desk lamp, and about 30 hours for a digital clock. All of those are, you know, good additions. But really what's gonna happen is once I start to implement this more broadly, if I assume that I have 12 cattle, two dogs, and 30 chickens all wearing solar panels over the course of the summer, I'll be able to generate enough electricity to run my car for about 55 miles. Now I don't generally drive that much in a given day. And so what I'm actually gonna to start to do is sell that back to the electric company. And so what I do is I basically take the batteries that I collect the energy with, dump it into a power bank, and then transfer that back to the electric company. Once I've transferred that to the electric company, they then pay me for it. And so I actually see a lot of parallels to the way the, the milk companies come to the local dairies around here and collect the milk. The electric company is essentially coming to the local farms to collect the solar power. Now you're probably hearing me say all of this and saying, gosh, Morgan, this seems very harebrained. How did you get the science expertise to do it all? And the truth of the matter is I have been working with a friend of mine, Dr. Sunil Dayton. He's actually the Yahoo Sirius professor over at East Rhode Island State University focused on agrovoltaics. And so as I've been doing all of this, I've been running around talking to him, running some ideas by him, and getting his input. And that's really helped drive the development of this program. And yeah, he's just a really smart dude. Hey, Sonny, good to see you, man. So do you mind explaining to people how important a program like this is? Harnessing solar energy from farm animals really showcases a creative and sustainable approach to renewable energy. It's unconventional, yeah, but this method really shows you just how powerful it can be to double the impact. You know, cattle eat grass, which is one way you can do solar collection, but these panels are another way. And it really highlighting the critical role of ingenuity in solving our global energy challenges. So yeah, I'm really excited about the possibilities of this project. If you guys wanna get involved and help, the best thing you can do is actually share this video on social media because what I wanna do is get more people aware of this project. And I think if more and more folks start trying to put solar panels on their animals, I think we can really make a difference in this world. So thanks for watching, and I hope you guys are excited about this one as I am. Oh, I know Abby Dog is, yeah. Good girl.